bride and groom want you to know that they have invited you here today because each one of you played a very important role in their lives and they wanted you to celebrate with them as they enter this new season of life. You may be seated. It's interesting that just three weeks ago, this young man contacted me through Facebook needing a minister for a, for a quick wedding due to change of, uh, you know, unforeseen circumstances. And, you know, all in all, we have to say that we were kind of pressured for time, but uh, Jim and Kathy will be married here within the next 30 minutes. <laughs> no, just kidding. I want you guys to know, some of you guys know that that's just silliness, but uh, Walker uh, was a student, uh, my wife Angela, and uh, he's very dear uh, to Angela. And, uh, and so my wife and I are happy to be able to participate uh, in this ceremony. Over the last three to four weeks, we're actually beginning now. Over the last three to four weeks, uh, we've been able to, uh, to kind of cram in our, our premarital uh, counseling um, with them. Uh, we've probably spent about 10 hours over uh, four different dinner spots um, and just talking through um, what God's word tells us uh, about marriage. What my wife and I really wanted to plant within this couple here is, is how to have a successful marriage. And of course, we believe that, um, that since God, we believe that God has a blueprint for a successful marriage, we thought that since he's the author of life, we probably ought to go to him to find out what he has to say exactly how to have a successful marriage. And a successful marriage is not two people uh, cohabitating, uh, trying to just accomplish tasks together. It's much, much more than that. There are two primary passages in scripture uh, that we led them to, and uh, we had them, we encouraged them to commit to heart. I did tell them that I might ask them to recite it while they're up here, but I won't do that here this afternoon. But two passages that we wanted to look at. The first one is Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. And it tells us this. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. And this is the humility section. There's going to be four keys that we have to a successful marriage. And when these four things are applied to a marriage, a marriage has a tremendous um, opportunity of, of succeeding. And this humility here, the very first thing, I don't know if these two remember it, but the very first thing that we taught them is there's one thing that marriage is going to show you, and it's going to show you how absolutely what? How selfish that we are. And that is one thing that marriage, and those of you who are married, don't nod or anything. I don't want anybody to get in trouble, but it does show you, um, it does show us how selfish we actually are. So God directs us here in Philippians 2, 3, and 4, to look at, not even at one another as equals, but actually better than yourself. So what you're doing is you're establishing a relationship, trying to help the other person accomplish their goals that they desire uh, to, uh, to exceed in, in life. So we're helping, not being a stumbling block in any way, but being a stepping stone and constantly helping the other one achieve the goals that they're striving for. The second passage of scripture is going to deal with sacrifice. And we see that in Ephesians 5.25. And it says this, Husband, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Now, this particular passage of scripture is going to be dealing with sacrifice. Now, it tells us that Christ loved the church. And, it and the command to husbands is for a husband to love his wife. But maybe we don't quite understand what the biblical concept of love is. We may think that love is oftentimes just an emotional feeling that we have towards somebody or a strong liking uh, towards them. But scripture tells us, it gives us a definition of love. And whenever Christ sacrificed himself for you and for me, that is God's example of pure love. So in a marriage relationship, when a husband is willing to fulfill the role of Christ and sacrifice himself for the benefit of his bride, it's a beautiful thing. And that marriage can be a very, uh, a very uh, exceptional marriage. Another passage of scripture in Ephesians 5, 33, it gives us two more keys. So we've hit humility and sacrifice is needed for a successful marriage. And here's two more keys that we need. However, each one of you must also love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So we've covered humility, each one being a servant to the other, sacrifice, giving up, uh, giving up to help the other person succeed. And then the last two are this, it says love and respect. 
And in order for a marriage to be successful, a husband must love his wife, and a wife must what? Respect her husband. And when you have these four keys in a marriage, it gives it a great opportunity to be a successful, to be a great marriage. We're not just talking about just having a ring and going on together and saying, well, you know, I told you 20 years ago that I love you. If anything changes, I'll let you know. But this is we want them to have an exceptional marriage. And that is the desire more than anything of my wife and I for you, too. The last part of this uh, scripture that we need to talk through is this. It's verse 33, 32 of Ephesians 5. Paul, as he writes this, he says, as he's talking about marriage, he says, this is all a very profound mystery. He's talking about a husband and wife and Christ giving himself up for the church. He says, this is all of this, this marriage stuff is a profound mystery. But he said, what I'm really talking about is Christ and the church. And what a marriage symbolizes, marriage is a symbol. For the Christian, a marriage is a symbol of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as the groom and the bride, his church. That is why we should be taking marriages very seriously. Because it's a picture of our future relationship, or actually our current relationship, one day to be completely fulfilled with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as they stand before you this afternoon, it is Walker and Savannah uniting together in marriage. But it's also a picture that God wants us to see of that beautiful relationship that he has entered into us with. So with all that being said, Walker, through the time that we've spent together... In God's word over salad and chips and salsa and everything else. Do you understand your biblical responsibility as a husband to Savannah? I do. And Savannah, through the time that we've spent together, in God's word, sorry, hang on a second. I, I gave a bad pause there. <laughs> through the time that we have spent together in God's word, do you understand your responsibility as a wife, Christian responsibility as a wife to Walker? Walker and Savannah have prepared their own vows. Walker. Savannah. <clears throat> you know, you'd be hard pressed to find someone here that would make the claim that I seem like the type to marry his high school sweetheart. Some in this room might say that is not due to choice, but please know that is not the case. Instead, you proved to be an exception that I could not imagine failing to make. It is because of you, your patience and strength, that I now happily devote myself to you the rest of our lives. Thank you for waiting for me to catch up to you all of these years. And now, surrounded by friends and family, before God and all those who care to listen, I make these promises to you. I vow to always serve as your teammate in this game of life. Whether we're winning or losing, I'll be by your side through it all. I vow to help wipe your tears in times of sadness, to help steal your fears in times of anxiousness, and to bask in your beaming smile during moments of joy. I vow to provide for you, to care for you, and to work for you. Though I may not always have the option to be home, know that my heart and mind stay with you Always. However, when I am home, I vow to hang the decorations where you tell me <laughs> to open those stubborn pickle jars, and of course, to peel any eyes off the potatoes since you're so scared of those. <laughs> but most importantly, I vow to always treat you as the ends and never the means. Your happiness is my goal. I will work every day to achieve. Savannah? Oh boy. <laughs> it's unbelievable that I get the chance to promise myself to the person I consider to be the greatest blessing in my life. It still seems like a dream that I, a regular little gal, could convince such an intelligent, selfless, hardworking, loyal, and handsome man to take a chance with me. Even as we left our base just a few short months after we started dating, I was able to convince you that, yeah, we would make it. And even though you weren't so sure, you still decided to take a chance with me. After years of hearing that both of us are crazy and that long distance never works, here we are, together. 
and here I get to make the easiest decision of my life. I've chosen you for the past five years. I choose you today, I will choose you tomorrow, and I will choose you always. Though our life leading up to this point has had its fair share of bumps, date changes, and even a global pandemic, I know that together, you and I will be able to face every struggle with the help of God. Thinking about the commitment we're making today before God and our family and friends, I can't help but be thankful for the for you and the life and happiness you have given me. Thank you for always choosing to see the best in me. Thank you for holding me to the highest standard, but also for forgiving me and my shortcomings. Thank you for loving me even when I struggle to love myself. Thank you for changing me for the better. It took me meeting you for me to figure out who I am and what life is really all about. When I think of the promises I want to make to you, I get overwhelmed because you truly deserve the greatest things this world has to offer. And although I will never be able to sufficiently spell out each of those things, I promise to start with these. I promise to always admire your huge, selfless, determined, and trusting heart. I promise to uplift you, defend you, and speak well of you, to be your toughest ally and your most fearless defender. I promise to grow with you, believe in you, and be faithful to you. I promise to give you the best of myself each and every day. I promise to support and follow you wherever you may go. I promise to move houses, cars, careers, and even to move away from our family and friends so that we can move towards our new adventure together. I promise to wait, to wait for you during potential deployments, wait for orders, wait for phone calls, and to wait for our forever. I promise to always walk by your side and to be the wife that you truly deserve. And I promise to be your partner and equal in all things. I believe in who we are, what we are, and what God will help us become. You are my past, my present, and my future. You are my peace. Regardless of where the Air Force might take us, I promise to hold our love tight and to pursue you each and every day. I promise to love you for the life that we create together, not the life we leave behind. To love you for you and not your uniform. And to love and cherish you for who you are today, who you will be tomorrow, and every day to come. seek to be open and honest with you. I will seek to be open and honest with you. And I say these things. And I say these things. Believing that God is in the midst of them all. Believing that God is in the midst of them all. Savannah, would you speak your vows to Walker? I take you, Walker. I take you, Walker. To be my husband. To be my husband. Loving you now. Loving you now. And as you grow and develop. And as you grow and develop. Into all God intends. Into all God intends. I will love you when we are together. I will love you when we are together. And when we are apart. And when we are apart. When our lives are at peace. When our lives are at peace. And when they are in turmoil. And when they are in turmoil. When I am proud of you. When I am proud of you. And when I am disappointed in you. When I am disappointed in you. In times of rest. In times of rest. And in times of work. And in times of work. I will honor your goals and dreams. I will honor your goals and dreams. And help you to fulfill them. And help you to fulfill them. From the depth of my being. From the depth of my being. I will seek to be open and honest with you. I say these things. I say these things. Believing that God is in the midst of them all. Believing that God is in the midst of them all. Walker, would you take the ring that you have that represents the vows that you have just spoken? Would you take Savannah's left hand, place the ring on her finger, and please repeat after me. 
Savannah, I give you this ring. Savannah, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness. As I place it on your finger. As I place it on your finger. I commit my heart and soul to you. I commit my heart and soul to you. I ask you to wear this ring. I ask you to wear this ring. As a reminder of the vows we have spoken today. As a reminder of the vows we have spoken today. Savannah, would you take the ring that you have that represents the vows that you have just spoken? Take Walker's left hand, place in the ring on his finger, and repeat after me. Walker, I give you this ring. Walker, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness. As I place it on your finger. As I place it on your finger. I commit my heart and soul to you. I commit my heart and soul to you. I ask you to wear this ring. I ask you to wear this ring. As a reminder of the vows we have spoken today. As a reminder of the vows that we have spoken today. By no authority of my own, but upon the word of God and the requirements met for the state of Missouri, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may now kiss your bride. Ladies and gentlemen, I now introduce to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Walker and Savannah Ince.